Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I go by Rachel Ray on the internet and today it is Floss Tube. This video is the kind of catch up each week where I tell you about what I've been stitching or knitting or you know whatever it else that I might be crafting uh, but mainly in the fiber arts. So I have a few things to share with you today. I have a finish. I have some whips. I have some exciting new crafts that I'm bringing to the channel, and um, I have the winners for last week's giveaway as well, so please stay tuned. Uh, and then I have a little bit of haul as well that I want to share with you. So let's do the winners of last week first, because that is very important. So I ran the YouTube random comment picker which is on a website, uh, and made sure that I used the words that I asked you to put in your comment. Now, I did have to check and make sure that you were in my happy mail form, and a few times I would roll or uh, press spin or whatever it is and uh, start, and it would choose someone, and when I went to look for them in my happy mail form, which is just linked down there below. It's a Google document uh, where I just ask for your name and your email address. Um, if, if you haven't filled that in before, you only have to fill it in once, but if you have never filled it in before and you go to enter a, a giveaway that I run on the channel, but I can't get you um, and email you, then I have to select another person. That's just to help with identity theft because it has happened several times on the channel before, a long time ago. <laughs> so that's why I do it that way. So if you have filled in that form before, there's no need to fill it in again. You just have to fill it in the one time and you're good. Um, I'm probably going to uh, purge that form in the next few months, maybe maybe on uh, the summer solstice, actually, that would be a good time to do it. And then I'll ask everybody to just do that form again, because uh, I get a lot of duplicate entries and it's just very confusing for moi. <laughs> so that's a big introduction to the Happy Mail form. But if you've never heard of it before or anything like that, and you don't know what I'm talking about, just head down there. I promise in the description box of this video, you will see where it says under social happy mail form. It's a little Google document, put in your details and you're good. All right. So last time I asked for you to use the words, okay, tea and shed. Okay is for this bendy stitchy chart that says you're okay, I guess. We had 32 people use the word okay in their comment. And the winner for this chart is Anne DaCosta. Congratulations, Anne. I do have your address, so I will send that away to you promptly. Next, I asked for everyone to use the word T if they'd like this chart. And there were 50 people who entered for this chart. And the winner for this one is Deborah Kaiser. Congratulations, Deborah. I have also have your um, address, so I will send that on to you. And finally, I asked you to use the word shed for this little chart and there were 24 people who entered and the winner is Lori Moreau. Um, I've gone ahead and emailed you Lori to get your email, your physical mailing address. So please check your email and make sure that it didn't go to the spam folder. Sometimes when I, when I say things like, uh, congratulations, you've won. Uh, it doesn't let me send it <laughs> or it goes into your spam folder. So just double check that. I've already sent it away, that email to you. So thank you all so much for entering into the giveaways. I'm going to put them to the side so that I make sure that I send them off. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. I finished my season of Serenity Shawl by Knit Joys. Uh, this labor of love took me, well, I started it on December 1st and I finished it on April the 15th. And is this the right way? That's the right side. This is it. I'd like to do a little tour because I'm super excited for it. The yarn that I used was a Christmas advent um, that I got from Dina's Home of Graphs in the UK. And I'm hoping that one of these days I'll be able to block it 
and you'll be able to see how pretty all of these lace sections are because they'll be all opened up and you'll be able to see the holes properly and the borders will actually, you know, stay up. Right now they wanna curl in on themselves. So this was a beautiful project. Um, it was very daunting. It was difficult in some places, not all over. Like these sections of um, solid, well, it looks solid, but it's not, I promise. Um, there's only one solid section, two actually, uh, where, you know, um, but all the, all the lace sections were, were pretty difficult um, to, to kind of get used to. I don't know how to explain it. But as a new knitter, this is one of my favorite sections. I love, I love this kind of braid along the two sides. You see that? So pretty. And then the purple. Um, I think I figured out what I did wrong. So there's this piece here. I think it's supposed to be longer. I believe that this should have ended up here. So it should have continued to about here. And that's what has pushed things. So that section is gorgeous. And I love this yarn. I can't express to you how much I love this yarn. Um, here's another solid section, but it's not quite solid. Uh, so we've got this one, another solid, but not quite. It was supposed to end with this, this section. Oops, sorry. This should have been the top, but unfortunately it didn't meet, didn't exceed this. So I had to get creative and I added this section, which was the last color of the advent and then I added this section which is a repeat of the first border and I did it properly this time and then I used leftover yarn from the rest of the advent but it is so pretty um, it's funny because well it's not blocked yet so you can wear it like a shawl. I'm using the long edge around my body. Now, if you're going to do this or if you're doing it right now, one of the things that they say is that you can take the scalloped edge and bring it along all the way down and to the point of the shawl. But I chose not to do that because I want you to see the clear definition, not only on the long edge, but also on the short edge. See how on the short edge you can see all the different colors. This has the I-cord edge all along it. I'm putting my face in there so you can really kind of see how it's kind of there. <laughs> but on this edge, it is not an I-cord. I may go back in when I'm feeling more confident, I guess, and I will just pick up using the color that of that section that I used, and then I will go back and do an I-cord. But that is not today. Today is not the day. <laughs> so yeah, beautiful shawl. I absolutely adore it. And I'm actually wearing it like a shawl. See? Ta-da. Can you see it? So you can't, you can't see the scalloping yet because it's not blocked, but I am very happy about it. Um, I'm drinking sparkling water today because I gotta hydrate.
All right, that's my finish. And so that's all the knitting that I've done. Now it's just gonna be talking about cross stitch and embroidery, but I'll get to that later. Um, let me pop this over here. So first up, I'd like to share with you my progress of Wakanda Forever by Park Hopper Bart on Gumtree. And I am doing this for a friend. This is a birthday present. And I have worked a bit, but I am not taking this out of the Q-Snap. I will take my other project out of the Q-Snap, but I'm not taking this out because I am going to be working on it again today. This is what it's going to look like at the end. Um, but pretend that the black is negative space because I'm not using black fabric, I'm using gray. My fabric is from Mystic Fabrics Misty and it is in the color Nothing on 32 count. And this is where I am. Last time I had completed the Middle Panther, which is the one on the right that you're seeing. There we go. The one that's next to my fingers. That's all I had done last week. So I've done a bit, but the problem was that I had to frog three times last night and I still have to frog. This is uh, one stitch over too far. So um, I guess that's just the problem for me of stitching on linen at night. I'm very bad at that. Um, I wish I could fix that, <laughs> but I can't. Um, I'm using none of the call for. I'm using Bee Stitch Me Silk Floss for all of these. And um, except for the white, the white is Snowflake, Snowflake by Weeks Dye Works. And um, I love it. I love it so far. I'm going to bring in the orange next. The orange and the yellow go up there so you can see it. And I shared this on the my Facebook group with Mrs. Coffee, and someone pointed out that you know they were like, "Oh, the X is lopsided. It's it's supposed to be on the edges." So just so that you can see that I'm not crazy. <laughs> I had a discussion with my friends Jesse and Heike last night because I was getting very frustrated, and um, we. <laughs> Uh, they were like, yeah, that's why I count and recount and, you know, count, uh, put put your needle in the spot and then count from all the other points. But like when you're on linen, it's really hard to do, first of all. I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm, I am a chaotic stitcher. <laughs> I frog a lot. It's just, I just, I order extra thread just in case because I... Don't like counting. I think I, I picked the wrong craft. <laughs> anyway, um, you might have also noticed these. These are magnetic cable ties, which I found on Amazon, and I will have these linked in my link haven. So I have two other Google documents, not to be confused. They're very easy to understand. I have them labeled properly down below. First is link haven, links where to shop. Uh, and that's where I put things like, you know, where I got these things, where to get Q-snaps, where to get needle minders. This is from my own shop, uh, rachelroycraft.etsy.com, which is going to open in the next few weeks. It's not open right now. I'm still working. I'm actually trying to adjust to being home first. Um, but they hold your fabric away. Uh, it's not doing a good job right now, but... Both sides are magnetic and then actually one side has this little plus you can barely see it that's the magnetized side and then you can just like pull up your fabric and voila it holds it out of the way which is fantastic so I got a I got an eight pack I think Let's see I had a whole bunch of them and I got the black ones because it's me. <laughs> uh, if you knew me in real life, I mean, you saw that I'm wearing all black. Um, 
it's just kind of a uniform at this stage. Everything goes with black. So uh, if my base is black, then I can accessorize with lots of color, which is what I like to do. Because I like to make people smile. But I am deep down a goth. All right. So that is Wakanda Forever, Park Hopper Bart. I never talk about like one over one or two over one. If I'm doing one over one, I will tell you. I think I got it. We're trying this again. The way that I normally stitch on linen is that I come up through one hole, I skip a hole, and then I go down in the other side, and then I go under my fabric and I come up through here, and then I'm not directionally challenged, and then I cross over again. That's over two over two fabric threads. There's one and two, yes? If you're doing over one, it means that you're just making a teeny tiny X by going up through here, down through here, up through here, down through here. I can't, I can't. I have to actually look at the paper if I'm gonna do that. So the difference is that a one over one is gonna be super teeny tiny. The X is gonna be like that. Yeah? But if you're doing over two, it's going to be like that with a hole in the middle. Does that make sense? And then um, the first number, when it's like 1x1 or 2x1 or whatever, which never happens, is how many strands of floss you're using. So if you're using a higher count of linen or even weave, like a 40 count, you're probably doing a one over two. If you're doing one over one, congratulations. I hope that your floss is very thin, <laughs> but it's possible. But what I mean is you don't have to worry about it. That's what I mean. And if you have questions, um, there are some fantastic resources out there. Actually, I can stop pointing this at you. You're not my student. Um, <laughs> There are fantastic resources out there if you need to learn, but I will correct myself. I normally do two over two and Ada is always over two. Okay. Or one. Crap. I know nothing. Don't listen to me. Why do you even watch me? <laughs> okay. Next whip. Next whip is my Temperature Mandala by Apricot Polka Dot. And this is such a fun stitch. I will take this out because you deserve to see it. Oh, I have a hanging thread. I'm sorry. I'm using white 14 count Ada for this project. And I'm using floss that I got from Amazon in this little bucket. You right. might've seen me unbox it. Mm -hmm. Hush. Sorry, she's being concerned. <laughs> um, so very basic supplies. I did buy that to use for this project because I thought it would be nice to have like a little portable thing. And then I realized, actually, I was gonna do this anyway. This is a floss ring or a binder ring or something. I have that linked in the Link Haven too. Um, aren't those colors pretty? Pl please don't mind the state of my threads. Chaotic. This is where I am. Ain't it pretty? <laughs> Darcy, if you haven't watched, okay. If you've not watched uh, Darcy yet, I'm gonna link him. Darcy Cameron is uh, a light in my dark, stitchy corner at the moment. Sometimes, you know, we get depressed or we might feel a little full of ourselves, but like he definitely makes it feel a little bit more um, funny. If you don't like profanity, then don't watch him. But he is a funny Canadian guy who stitches. Anyway, and it purdy is something that he's been saying. <laughs> when he holds up his stitching. You cannot see the colors properly because of the white balance. 
but I have caught up today. Twenty eighth, March twenty eighth. I'm up to March twenty eighth on my chart. Nobody's gonna be copying that. Um, I sat down and I did most of March um, in two days, so that was pretty good. Cause I wanted to do some and then go work on Wakanda. It's very fast to catch up with, and oh, I get this question a lot. They're like, oh, well, what temperatures are you using, America or Ireland? I'm using the temperature, the high temperature for the day of wherever I am, which is fun. So if I do end up getting to travel, uh, maybe we will see the temperatures for lower place low. Other colors <laughs> for lower temperatures. My brain. Please excuse my brain today. So yes, um, we are just about to start April now and go around and around and around we go. Love it. Highly recommend it. Um, I am not starting the Peppermint Purple 2021 Sal. I'm not. So do I have it here? I don't have it right here, but impromptu giveaway. Uh, if you would like to do the Peppermint Purple 2021 Black Work Stitch Along. Um, put purple somewhere in your comment. <laughs> um, because I have the, I have all the floss on a card that they, that I bought from them, but I'm not going to be doing it. So uh, I would like to give it to you because I have no use for it and I'm not gonna do it next year. I'm not gonna start it now. Uh, things were a bit kind of chaotic there for the last few months, and I just don't have the capacity for that kind of a whip right now with with this one. And then also the um, crochet blanket, which I will talk about in a little while. No, I'll talk about it right now. Okay. So I wanted to do a temperature corner to corner blanket and I was talking about it last year and I got all my supplies and they're actually in this purple bag right here. And um, I, I wasn't here, first of all. I don't wanna catch up. So I'm going to start it on the solstice. I'm gonna start it on the hottest day of the year, uh, midsummer. And uh, then I'll go through to next year because I think it works better that way because then your longest rows are going to be when you have the most time to sit down and crochet those rows, right? So um, if I can, I'll pop in a picture. If not, just have a look in my whip list. So that's another Google document that talks about all my whips and stuff. And I'll make sure that the link is somewhere where you can find it um, in either of those documents. But I'm not going to start mine until the middle of the summer. And then that way, when it's summertime, the rows are gonna be teeny tiny. And then once we get to winter, I'll have plenty of time to sit down and do one full row. Um, I'm doing mine with like a really small yarn and a really small needle so that I have a lap blanket and not like a bed blanket. Um, and I've seen that other people have jumped on and they're doing the temperature corner to corner blanket and I wish them all very well with it. I can't wait to join you in the summer. <laughs> um, so that's, that's just an update on that. So yes, if you would like the peppermint purple black work, year of black work, 2021 Sal floss, please write purple in your comment. Make sure that you've already filled in the happy mail form. If you filled it in before, you're fine. Uh, do not write giveaway anywhere in your comment, and I'd love to hear you use purple in a creative way. That would be fun. You don't have to, but it would be fun for you and for me. <laughs> okay, and lastly for whips is a brand new craft. And I am working on a video for it right now. I purchased this embroidery kit from Amazon a few months ago. And it came with everything in the kit. Just drop that needle. And this is how far I got. 
okay, it's not going to focus very well, but um, not a huge start. This took me about an hour. <laughs> I've never done embroidery before. So my back looks like it's not too bad. But um, yeah, I'm working on it. It is fun to kind of learn. Um, not going to be perfect, uh, but I'm giving my first impressions and uh, kind of my first experience trying it. It's more of a watch me fail than a learn from me. <laughs> but it is fun. So I hope that you look forward to seeing this video too. Hopefully it'll be up next week, but mm, it might take a little longer than that. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can work on this while I um, sit down with the girls today. You know, there might not be any editing to this video today because, yeah. Uh, where else was I going to go? Oh, I don't know if I showed this to you or not. I think I did, but I did want to mention it. Is the Zen Garden Chatelaine. Um, this is, so if you don't know what Chatelaine is, Chatelaine is a, I'm going to try to bring it up so that, just bear with me, the desktop view. So this is my, my unicorn. This is like a Chatelaine that is the only one that I'll ever want to do. It's this beautiful Japanese garden with koi ponds and tori gates. Uh, it's got statues of the Buddha in different positions. There's lots of beautiful flowers and lily pads and all kinds of stuff. Well, uh, I'm super excited to do it and I want you to join my progress on it. I, however, have not started. <laughs> but I think I showed... I think I told you that I got these, but I did want to kind of show you a little bit just how pretty these Glorianas are. I will make sure to show you in full detail uh, closer to the time, but if you can just see oh, these beautiful colors, if it'll focus. It was focusing just fine. I, I wanted to put it here so that you could see the colors better. We have, um, those are all the Gloriana's silks. These are all wildflowers. And I think, yeah, these are Karen water lilies. Nope. It shows it better when there's more color, I guess. And then these are the wild flowers. These are, these are like a much different type of floss. But you can see how pretty and it, it's very muted, but it is gorgeous. And these are all variegated or tonal. And... Where's the last of them? Dinky dies. Um, there's different types. So these are dinky dye pearls. Oh, wow. That feels so cool. Hard to really show the detail of it, but they're really stringy and high twist. Whereas these are just like the normal dinky dies. Uh, these these are silk as well, but they're fluffier. These are the ones that I'm used to. Let's see, this is my dinky dye collection. Uh, my friend Jesse is a is a distributor for dinky dyes. Distributor? Not really. A seller. She she has this like silk of the month club that I love, and I've been building up my stash. She's going through the alphabet, so yeah. Anyway, um, so that is my Zen Moss Garden mandala, uh, which I think might be my new year new start because I'm not planning on starting many new things this year. I know a lot of people are talking about their 
you know, Whipgo and uh, which is like bingo for cross stitching. There's a Facebook group, Whipgo 2021, uh, which I am also a part of, but I have not started and I don't think I don't think I'm capable of it right now, maybe later. Uh, and then there's also the thing that uh, I was going to do, do, excuse the mess. Um, I even made a binder for it. This is my 24 hours of cross stitch um, yearly planner. And I was going to write down, you know, like everything that I work on and stuff. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do that at some point. Uh, right now it doesn't feel like it. So I'm not going to participate sadly in stitch mania this year i'm gonna do a version that's like stitch sania which i've heard other people talk about in previous years where i'm just going to work on things that i need to get done i'm not going to start anything new in um in may unless heiko wants to start our friendship sampler but i can always wait I have plenty of whips right now. One of one of the things that was really interesting to me would be to only work on my mania new starts. But that's still like, how many did I do? Like 18 of them or something? I don't have it in me right now. Maybe next year. Uh, yeah. Okay. Haul. Let's look at some haul. So... First up, I wanted to show you this because um, you're no stranger to charitable works here in Flosstube. And you know that I have an affiliation with um, Seal Rescue Ireland. Well, I'm not, sorry, I should not say I'm, I'm, a, I'm not an affiliate. I have donated. We raised money and we got a kennel uh, there to rehab injured seals and get them back into the wild. And they had a new merchandise uh, update while I was in Virginia, and I could not help myself. So I'm going to keep that coupon. I decided to go ahead and buy a t-shirt to support them. So this is another Healthy Seas, Healthy Seals picture. Isn't it pretty? On the back says Seal Rescue Ireland and float for the love of all things. So I got a nice big shirt and that's kind of like a sleep shirt for me, but I love the design. I believe you can still purchase if you would like and uh, help support seals too. So I wanted to share that with you because I know that they're, oh, and they sent me a sticker too the wild. I'm going to put that here on my desk. <laughs> um, I know that you, you like to see uh, what I do with, with my charity, which I'd like to get back into the um, auctions again to raise money. There's my scissors. I was like, where are my scissors now? Now, this one is from Knit Crate, and I have no idea what it is. So, Knit Crate... I looked at my orders and I was like, hmm, interesting. Oh, okay, what is it? March Heartstrings. Hmm. I don't remember doing this, but, ooh, it's nice. Audine Wool's Dreamy Sock. Uh, this is, ooh. 60% Superwash Blue Face Luster with 20% Alpaca and 20% Nylon. It is really super squishy. And it's hairy. It's kind of fuzzy. That's what Alpaca does. It's kind of like, can you see it on the edge there? It's really furry. Uh, so I liked the sock base better than the regular base. Unfortunately, this would have been the last time that you could choose your color vibe or whatever they called it. Um, I can't remember anymore. They have since, because of the problems that they've been having with production and shipping, 
they have made it a completely random surprise box. So from now on, if I get an it crate, it'll be because I love the base and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that I like the color too. Um, but one of my favorite things about knit crate was that you could choose the one you wanted, but it seems like that was causing too many issues. So sad face. Um, and I guess, I guess the gift this month was a sticker. That's a little disappointing. Usually it's something more interesting like a like a notions bag or they gave out other stuff before but you know what they've been having issues you know so uh well documented they've been keeping up in communication so it's not like it's a surprise i mean removing the color vibe is a huge disappointment to me but i can understand why i think that the issue for me has been that the colors are just not they haven't been calling to me like next month. I think it's, it's very neutral. Um, and I'm, I like bright stuff. So as you can tell, which do you like, do you like what I did? I did the little foam board separators. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was really fun to do. Do I have anything else that I can share with you today? Let me see if there's anything else that's well, that's all diamond painting, I think. And I don't know what this is. It feels... Hmm. Feels interesting, but I don't know what it is, so I'm not going to keep you here for any longer. I know it's a short episode today, but I really thank you for joining me today for, uh, for, you know, sticking around and, uh, crafting with me while I just show you stuff <laughs> and the updates of that stuff. Hopefully next week I'll have a little bit more to show you more, more whips, but this week I'm just so happy that I finally finished my shawl, uh, which took four and a half months to do. Um, this advent was very, uh, helpful for me to learn how to, um, you know, do different knit techniques, which I'd never done before. And it was great, great practice. So I highly recommend trying it. Um, especially if you're a seasoned knitter, it'll be very easy for you. And if I did have the patience, I would do it again, but maybe in just two contrasting colors, I think it would look fabulous. Right. So that's it for, for me today. Uh, please, if you have a moment, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down. Either way, uh, I do appreciate the interaction. If you haven't subscribed already, there is a subscribe button down there and it's free. <laughs> and if you want to hit the bell to be notified anytime I upload a video, that would be awesome. Just turn on those notifications to all. And then when you get sick of me, you can turn it off again. <laughs> it would be great to show up on your feed and on your phone or tablet. Um, if you would like to get more behind the scenes stuff from me, like vlogs or schedules or even live streams and Zoom meetings once a month, um, please head over to my Patreon account where you can find all that stuff. I have a link down there. If you have any questions for me or if you'd like to know any more, please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer it in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye!